welcome to another episode of the Everyday Expertise Podcast. I'm your host, Roland Martin, and I hope that today's conversation will expand your knowledge. Today, I welcome my brother, Ricky, back to the show. If you know Ricky, or have listened to the two previous episodes on which he joined me as a guest, then you'll know that he has a lot of different interests. And uh, this time, he comes on to talk about his hobby of making videos and sharing them on YouTube. So throughout the conversation, he talks about his methods that he used to create his videos, some of the fun videos that he's made in the past, what he's doing right now and currently with his YouTube channel, and uh, then he gives a little bit of advice for if you're interested in starting out and making a video, videos and sharing them, and um, if you're thinking about putting them on YouTube. I enjoyed talking to Ricky and learning more about his video making hobby, and I hope that you too will enjoy this conversation and learn from his expertise. Welcome, Ricky, back to the Everyday Every Everyday Expertise Podcast. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Roland. It's good to be back. So, tell me a little bit. What uh, has life been like for you for the last few months, since uh, maybe since the last time that that uh, you came onto the podcast? Uh, yeah. Well, it's not not too much is happening. Um, uh, yeah. I've been spending a lot of time at home, um, still still working at home and yeah as we're as you know we're in lockdown still here in Ontario um so I really don't leave the house too much these days other than <laughs> going for walks occasionally or for a run occasionally mm -hmm. um but but yeah at the, at the same time it's uh it's been it's been good in some ways too um some in some ways there's been more more time to spend together like with jasmine and um a bit more time to kind of work on my some of my own personal projects and hobbies which uh which we'll talk about tonight yeah yeah um and we'll probably talk about how you've you've done a little bit more with uh with your videos with your putting videos on youtube and that kind of thing would you be able to have done that if if we wouldn't um, be more in a lockdown and some of the maybe other things that you do normally not not happening or would you would you been able to to do it um, in, in normal times as well? Um, I think it would be a lot harder in normal times. That said it does it does tend to seem like um, I don't know like like you think you'd have so much more spare time because you, you aren't doing all those events that you used to do or whatever but mm -hmm. It does kind of seem like you almost you still almost have no spare time in a yeah. way. I, I don't know how it works, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder if it's if it's type of people too. Like I think some people are always filling up their their time with things, and maybe some people, if if their regular scheduled um, events and things like that aren't happening, they maybe have more free time. Or looking on on uh, Twitter and things like that. Sometimes during a lockdown, it seems like other people have have uh, more free time <laughs> than I seem to find myself with. So yeah. it probably depends somewhat on the on the person. Yeah, that's true. So I, I have done the, the question for you because my normal question is uh, is what hobbies do you have to, to share with us? Um, and you've you've done that a couple times here already. So um, I'm wondering if you picked up any new hobbies over the last few months, especially with the quarantine happening and and uh, being at home more. Uh, yeah, not not really. The only one that I, I thought I'd mention is walking. So mm -hmm. at the end of or towards the end of last year, I got um, a new smartwatch um, Very nice. to to track uh, to use for running, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but it yeah, it tracks a lot of things. Um, and one of those is steps. And it happens to be the same brand as dad's fitness tracker they're both mm -hmm. garmin so it works really well to um we're like friends on the app and ever since he heard that i that i got a garmin smartwatch he wanted to uh challenge me do step challenges each week um so i've been i've just been a little more conscious about how many steps i get in a day and 
I'll go out for um for walks probably a little more than I than I used to. I haven't been I haven't been much competition for him, um, <laughs> other than one week when I <laughs> when I really put forth an effort to beat him. Uh, he walks a lot, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've been walking a bit more and tracking steps. How do you uh, how do you enjoy it compared to running? Like, is it uh, uh, more enjoyable, about the same, not as enjoyable as? as running as a regular exercise or hobby? Um, I find it, I find it to be like boring if I'm just doing it for exercise. Um, okay. but I find it like, it, it's a really nice thing to do with Jasmine. Like if we'll go on a walk, mm. we can have a conversation as well. So that's really nice. And occasionally it's, I'll enjoy just going on a long walk and listening to something, um, like a podcast or, uh, audiobook or something mm. um and I, I do that with running too but there there's something about walking that's i don't know it's it's almost a slightly different listening experience like mm. um you can almost be you can almost pay attention more like I, I tend to get more distracted when running i think okay is that because there it's it's more work or takes more more energy to run do you i think so think that's yeah. yeah that's yeah i i, I I would probably have said that's that's the same for me too that I maybe get more out of it when I'm walking but um but but um but yeah I don't know I can I can definitely get into a podcast when we're while running too so I don't know if there's a, a huge difference for me um yeah I've been following along with your YouTube channel I don't know if I keep up with quite everything that that you've been doing this year but tell me a little bit about um about what inspired you this year to put a little bit more work into uh, into making videos and and putting them up on YouTube and um, and kind of what your your what schedule you've developed with that over the since uh, the beginning of January here. Sure. So I've had my YouTube channel for a long time. I, I created it uh, almost twelve years ago, and but oh, I've wow. been I've been very. Um, inconsistent when it comes to how often I upload. So sometimes I'll go half a year to a year without without posting a video. But there have been times where I've done some some sort of a, a schedule or whatever. Um, but yeah, anyway, basically, um, towards the end of this past year, uh, I decided that I'd, I'd really like to to start making um, making a habit of making videos and uploading them to, to my YouTube channel more regularly. And I think maybe part of starting in the new year was that um, last year I was doing a drawing every day. Right. And so um, I, it was almost kind of like, okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to do a drawing every day necessarily in, uh, in 2021. So um, it was almost like replacing, replacing that. And actually I, I started out doing a video every single day. Um, not with the plan of doing it for the whole year, but I kind of wanted to just see what, it, what that would be like and see how long I could, I could make it. Um, and the answer was 17 days, I think, or maybe 14. Oh, wow. I don't know. It was so a little over but, two weeks. Uh, you had one out every day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, yeah, then it, um, I mean, I knew it wasn't sustainable from the beginning, but I, I was hoping maybe to make it um, to the end of January, but that didn't happen. Um, but I'm, I'm still making them regularly. I try to make a video to upload every, <clears throat> every Monday and Thursday. And then I've been doing this yep. thing where I, um, I do a live stream on Saturday mornings where I play chess. So I've been, I've been kind of trying that out as well. Nice, yeah. Um, do you? So you talked about that it was kind of a, a replacement for, for the drawings that you were doing last year. Was that you kind of were deciding to shift what uh, you were kind of doing for your, your regular art form and that kind of thing, or was there something something else that inspired the the switch to videos or making more videos anyway? Um, I don't know that it was that it was it like necessarily a, a conscious decision to to switch art forms um i think it was that's more just kind of how it happened like i i stopped doing a drawing every day so 
I guess, yeah, I had a little more time to focus on something else and hmm. I decided to make that videos. Yeah, I had this question down for a little bit later, but I think I'll throw it in here now. Do you have a, a goal or vision or kind of something that you want to do with your YouTube channel or a, a place that you, you wanted to get to? Or are you just kind of doing it for the fun of it and for, for the, the joy of making videos and putting them out there? Yeah, so it's, it's definitely something that has evolved over time, I think, as far as my, my purpose for the YouTube channel. Um, like, um, in years past, or at one point I would have said it was, it was more of a, almost like a type of journaling or something where mm. it was a way to document, um, important events like trips and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of neat cause I can look at some of those videos and it's almost like a, a time capsule of sorts. I can mm. relive a little bit like what what life was like in that uh, particular time um, mm -hmm. and now as of late I think it's more um, uh, it's maybe still a little bit that but uh, I would say that the the goal of it now is to um, is is to I guess it basically uh, like be a source of entertainment for people or mm. I want to make something that people want to watch um, I, I've always liked, um, trying to make people laugh. Um, and so I, I try to throw some humor in and yeah, I guess just basically brighten people's day. Um, mm -hmm. maybe every now and then inspire them. Um, as far as where I, where I see this going, um, I mean, I, I would love for it someday to be, to, to grow a lot bigger. Um, I have 507 subscribers right now and yeah, I, I'd love to, to have more, but I've never, um, at this point I've never like set a goal, like saying, you know, I'm going to get to this certain amount of subscribers by mm -hmm. this time or I've, I've never done anything like that. And I've never made growth the main focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, interesting. We might might uh, hear some more about kind of yeah how you've gotten to to where you are with your videos and that kind of thing as we as we hear about your story. So let's actually go into that. And so thinking back, um, and I, I kind of have some memories of of you first getting into um, making videos, but I'm curious to hear hear what it what it was like from your perspective and from your memories of it. So where did you first get introduced to this idea of of shooting videos and then editing them and uh, putting them together into a, a, a form of art that you can share with other people. Um, where did you first find out about that, get into doing it? And maybe what did you find appealing about it at, at the beginning? Mm -hmm. So first of all, like I, for as long as I can remember, I've been, I've been fascinated with, um, with like tape, with recording videos. Um, like I think okay. my earliest memories of videos would have been, um, probably our Schrock uncles with camcorders at, uh, at Schrock gatherings and stuff, or that right. kind of stands yeah. out in my mind as the, as the first thing. So, um, and yeah, I, I was just, I, um, I've always been fascinated with, with just the idea of recording something, being able, able to, um, watch it, watch it back later, like, um, in my mind, it's just been, it's always been like so much more powerful than just pictures. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wish that, uh, or back then I wished that our family would have had a camcorder too. Like I, I thought, <laughs> yeah. I thought that would have just been the, the best. And I don't know, I don't know if you um, remember this specifically, but I remembered on one of our family trips, I, th I think it was maybe our trip out east. Mm -hmm. um, I... I pretended that we had a camcorder. So I had like this, this crayon box, this empty crayon box that I opened up the bottom and then, so I could like peer through it. And that was my, right. my viewfinder. And if we were going on like some boardwalk, I would, uh, I would take this little crayon box along and pretend that I was recording video and I'd like put it out farther if I wanted to zoom in and stuff. <laughs> um, would you so, uh, commentate with it too? And like, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. I think that was the idea. Um, 
yeah, so I've always, I, as long as I can remember, I've just been fascinated with the concept of recording video. And then mm -hmm. as far as um, starting to edit it um, and, and yeah, that, that sort of thing, I really have to give credit to uh, my cousins, Trent and Anthony, for that. Mm -hmm. And the way I remember it is one day I went over to, to their place to hang out with them and mm -hmm. pretty much right when I got in the door, they, they took me down to the computer and they wanted to show me something. And they showed me this, um, this, this video, which was a few, a few cuts of Anthony going over a jump on, uh, on his bike, like this, this little jump that they had set up. Um, mm -hmm. but when, it, when I saw it, I was instantly like, just so intrigued. And I was just like, well, how did you do this? Like, um, and they're, yeah, we found this program on our computer, Windows Movie Maker, and you can put videos in there and like, you know, piece them together and stuff. And I was like, awesome. Like up until this point, I, I, I knew that people did this, but I didn't know that it was that accessible that like it came yeah. <laughs> on a standard Windows computer. So, um, our activity for that day was we, we went right outside with, uh, with the digital camera and started um, just grabbing whatever sort of um, sports footage that we could think of um, to film. So, you know, whether it was a slide tackle in soccer, it was more bike jumps and um, catches in baseball, skateboarding even, like just whatever we could think of. We got as much footage as, as we could and then we took it back mm -hmm. to the computer and and made uh <laughs> made our first movie martin's boys move in it <laughs> um, Wait, was it inspired by like sports highlights compilations or do you know like were you going off something to put it together or where did where you were just having it, fun yeah it must have been I, th I think we were trying to just think of like what what would be cool to to put in a video yeah um, yeah, I remember like, I think I remember you coming home and just being so excited about, about, uh, this idea and the possibilities of, of, uh, um, making, making videos and just how much fun you had with doing that. So that still stands out in my memory, how much fun you guys had with that little, little video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, they, they had no idea what they were, what they were getting themselves into because. I, I wasn't done there. Like I, from then on, I, all I wanted to do was make, uh, make videos with them. So I, I roped them into a couple more of my, a couple more of my projects after that. Um, yeah. Um, one, one I got them to do was, uh, was a music video where we just lip synced, um, the song Jesus freak by, mm -hmm. I think, was it DC talk? Yeah, that's maybe that's, that's who produced um, that song. Yeah, and there was one one other idea I had for this. It was more of a like a short movie where um Anthony and I I don't know if we were like friends or, or brothers, but um we challenged we were gonna challenge each other to the whole to a whole bunch of different things like around the world and shooting a basketball and a bike race. And okay. I was this character who was really confident and like obviously the best athlete. And Anthony was like the underdog, but he was going to beat me at everything. Okay. And we we filmed a few of those things, but um, it never we never finished the the full project. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that footage is probably just gone now. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that that was kind of your first introduction to it, but did you did you kind of start doing stuff on your own then, um, coming up with your own ideas for for putting videos together, or where did it go from there? Yeah, so we or mom and dad had a um, a digital camera at that time too, so I would borrow that, and yeah, I guess basically after after discovering that they, they had this software on their computer, I found, um, not sure if it was the exact same version, but a similar thing on our computer. Okay. And so I made some of my, my own as well. And yeah, some specific ones that come to mind is I also 
um, roped my younger sisters into some of, some of the projects that I would uh, come up with. And so we'd make these little like two to three minute um, movies, I guess, like these short, uh, short stories mm -hmm. where we were, we were actors, like we, we came up with names for our characters and stuff. And okay. yeah. usually the, the character that was played by Kara ended up being picked on in some way. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure, not sure why exactly, but. So it was your, you, you would often have the idea that, or how did you transition into the point where, where you realized you could make stories or, or something entertaining out of, out of putting videos together? Um, cause hadn't, what we'd have been used to with videos is like you said, they would be to document events or, or, um, kind of as maybe a memory thing more than anything. So do you know what inspired you to, to turn them into stories or mini movies or, or that kind of thing? Well, actually, so it's, it's interesting. So going back a bit to, um, <clears throat> the, the first day that we made the, the video with all the sports footage, um, mm -hmm. at that point, we re really had a very basic understanding of the editing software. And to us, it was just, you could line up clips in order and then you could choose different transitions, um, mm -hmm. in between the clips, but that was it. So, um, I remember we, like we had to start the video and stop it at the right time. Um, and oh, when we you were shooting the video could, with the camera. Right. We didn't realize yeah, that okay. you could, that you could trim. Um, and so discovering that opened up a, a whole new, um, a whole new world because, you know, you could, now you could cut, you could cut like, um, mid action, like say you're, you're putting up a basketball shot, you just cut it when it's in mid air and then the next shot it's, it's going in. Um, so I don't know, kind of discovering that, I think some of that happened organically, like just, just discovering, like it was just, uh, a new, um, a new, yeah, way to, to tell stories, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure exactly where, where this, this came in or what the timeline was, but I, at one point I would have, I would have said that, um, you know, the dream job would be to make movies. Like, okay. I, I remember being really interested in anything behind the scenes, like of the, the few DVDs we had at home, mm -hmm. I definitely watched all the behind the scenes footage, um, multiple times. Like I liked, I liked interviews with the actors and stuff, but anything where you got to look at like the sets and saw these huge cameras and, and, um, you know, saw really the how they made this, um, I was mm -hmm. fascinated by that. And so I think, yeah, somewhere there I developed um, the the desire to just kind of do, make my own movies. And okay. so that was that was the closest way to make these, to or to start with that, to make these uh, short, short movies with, uh, with my sisters. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, would you, come up with stories ahead of time, like write them or, or were you kind of coming up with a story as you were shooting the, the videos and, and, um, and then the story would develop from there. Or did you go into your, the, to your <clears throat> videos with a plan? The very first one I'm pretty sure was, um, we just kind of made it up as, as we went along or I directed it as we went along. I mean, I'm sure I had okay. somewhat, somewhat of an idea going into it, but after that, I think they got more, more and more planned. I, I'm pretty sure that um, for at least some of them, we we wrote out a script because I remember, um, yeah, getting Kayleen to memorize some lines, and okay. there was one where we just needed the audio so she could read it. I remember, like, we actually had something printed off for for at least one of them. Nice, yeah. So. Um... Yeah, maybe then continuing on, do you have any stories or or any descriptions kind of of how your <clears throat> video making and interest in video kind of kind of changed and evolved then as you got older? Um, yeah, so I guess, um, it, yeah, it started out with those kind of smaller projects. Um, and as 
yeah, I guess as I got more experience doing it and as I got a little older, I had maybe a few more opportunities to um, do different types of work with, uh, with use, kind of using the experience I had gained from just a basic knowledge in, in editing and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I guess some of some of the ways that it evolved for my personal projects was kind of turned into more of I would do more like documentary styles. Like I did one of our um, our road trip to our America. I called it where we went to uh, we had a Shrock reunion in Minnesota and and did a few other things along the way. So I made a video about that, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, yeah, I did more, um, some vlog style videos eventually too. Um, but then, yeah, it also led to some opportunities, um, where I was able to make videos for, for other people. Um, mm. one that comes to mind is, uh, for, for my cousin Logan's wedding, he asked if I would make a video, um, not of the wedding, but to show at the wedding. So I had to make it all beforehand. But um, basically he he gave me this picture of Logan and, and Ainsley. And um, the idea was that I would get, I would show this picture to strangers and ask them questions about, about uh, ask the strangers questions about Logan and Ainsley. And they'd have to answer based on just what they saw in this, in this picture. Okay. So this, so I, um, I roped in my cousin Anthony again, uh, to be the cameraman and we went to downtown Waterloo and just, and stopped, uh, <laughs> whoever looked like they might be willing to take some, <laughs> some time to do this. So I, I remember being like really nervous going into that and it seemed, seemed really scary, but after doing a couple, it, uh, I discovered that it was all right. And, you know, as a, generally speaking, people seemed um, to think it was a cool idea and they were, they were really good about it. And then, nice. uh, it was, it was a pretty big, um, a pretty big hit at the week at the wedding. Like I think, um, people really enjoyed it and thought it was funny. So that was, a yeah, that was kind of a, a unique experience and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, something a little different and yeah, it ended up being, uh, being enjoyable for, for me. Nice. Um, yeah, what were you going to say? Did you have more stories or anything from, um, from your, your past in video making before, uh, before we talk a little bit about where, where it's at now or what, what kind of you focus on now? One other one that I thought of, um, and that was when, when I was, um, <clears throat> in Guatemala. So I was doing some work there as, as a, a teacher. So I taught a few classes um, mainly English classes. Um, but then, um, the, my supervisor knew that I had an interest in, in making videos and stuff. So he got me to, uh, organize a, like a drama class as well. Mm. And then the big project at the end of that was, was making a movie. So, um, yeah, I kind of got the students to, um, basically gave them different roles. So some were, uh, actors and, and some were in charge of costumes. Um, some were, um, I think maybe they, they helped to write the, write the script too. Um, but anyway, the, the story or the video that we did was the story of Stephen. Um, and it was, so we had, we had filmed pretty much everything and it was, it was the last day of, of, uh, filming. And the last scene that we were filming was was the actual stoning of, of Stephen, um, like that story from the Bible. Right. And so we had pretty much like everybody was, was in that scene and we were, we were all out in this field. And as we were out there filming, uh, these storm clouds started ro rolling in oh, no. <laughs> and like, you could totally tell that it was just going to pour. And so I was, I was really stressing about, you know, trying to make sure that we got done, um, all we needed to film before it just dumped on us. Right. And I remember we got the, so we got the, the shots of, um, like the crowd and everything that we needed. 
and all we needed yet was a couple close-ups of the fake rocks actually um, hitting the actor who was playing Stephen. And <laughs> but it was it was starting to drip at this point, so I sent sent all the students back with uh, with another teacher, and so I didn't want like it just seemed like it was going to be a big mess for all the costumes and oh, stuff right, that we had yeah. out there to to get wet. So they went back and just like three or four of us uh, stayed to to film this last part and it yeah it started to pour before we were able to 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 get done filming so the the footage we had of um of Stephen getting hit by the stones you could like he was soaked and and you could tell like you could actually see some of some of the rain so in editing we were trying to figure out like how we're going to make this work Uh and so it actually it actually worked out pretty cool by putting just putting a thunder sound effect when they're just getting ready to to um throw the stones and right. a simple like rain filter in the in the editing software we made it we added like this dramatic effect where um <laughs> it starts raining like just as they're about to throw the stones and then it's totally <laughs> believable because when you see Stephen, then he's like soaked and you can actually see the rain coming down so <laughs> so it ended up uh working really well i thought but um yeah, it was just kind of an interesting experience to to be in charge of something like that. Yeah, I believe it. I'm sure uh, it was it was good and fun for the students, but I'm sure you learned a lot from it too. From <laughs> yeah, for sure, from being able to I mean <clears throat> plan out and put a video together, but also directing a whole bunch of young students and and making it work and, and putting it together. I yeah. can, I can imagine it, from my teaching challenges. days that would, <laughs> that would have its challenges. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, very good. Uh, looking back over all the videos you've created, um, what's your best or, or favorite video? Um, it's tough to pick one one favorite, um, but I will mention, uh, well, I, I wrote down three. Yeah, um, that's great. The first one, I'll, first one I'll mention is called Why I Run. And mm, yeah. it's, a, it's a short video. It's about three minutes long. Um, that I filmed when I was at the cottage one time with uh, with Jasmine's family, and so it's just some um, some scenes of me running um, along the along the beach and some of those roads in cottage country. So it's it's nice scenery and stuff. Um, and then there's a narration of me listing the reasons why I run in the background and some music. So it's it's a pretty simple concept, uh, but I was pretty happy with with how it turned out. And this has ended up being the most the most viewed video on my YouTube channel um, mm-hmm. about about a year after I posted it. Um, up until that point, it had got the same amount of views as as they normally do, like 300 or something. But okay. YouTube decided to start showing it to a bunch of people and uh, somehow a whole bunch of people started watching it. And so it. I mean, it didn't go like super viral or anything. I think it has 20,000 views now. Um, but so it has quite a few comments too. And a bunch of people um, shared their their experiences of running. And a couple people said really nice things about how they use this as motivation and, or they found it really inspiring. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's part of why I really like that one is, is yeah. it ended up uh, being seen by by quite a few people and yeah it was, it was just it was just great to to see that result yeah and the community that the very small community that's kind of growing around it in the comments yeah <laughs> I, I just yeah. go through and read them sometimes too uh, to, to see okay. what, if anyone's anyone's added anything or <clears throat> something since i enjoy running too i occasionally watch it for motivation as well so it's great oh nice <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what are your other uh, favorite favorite ones so another favorite is one I made um, when I was going to school, and it was during a strike. So there was there was six weeks when, um, yeah, there was a strike, so we didn't have classes, mm. and I made um, a parody of the movie The Martian. So instead of instead of uh, Matt Damon stuck on Mars, it was it was me. The student stuck stuck at home um, in his apartment and unable to uh, 
to like really leave so yeah i don't know i just kind of had had fun with that one and i liked how it uh how it turned out and there were a couple of my um my classmates that ended up seeing it too and they told me they really liked it and before that i don't think they would have like known that i um was making videos or anything like that so that 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 felt kind of good nice um and then the other one I, I wrote down is um, one I made just recently um, at the beginning of this year, and that was snowball throwing techniques. Um, I went out into to uh, the baseball field um, in, in the park here uh, close to our place and threw, um, or I, I did it all in one, one take, where I did four like, th- uh, basically um, baseball pitches, but with snowballs. Yeah. Um, so there was the fastball and the slider, then the knuckleball and the long range missile, and then <laughs> I filmed myself again getting hit by all of these, um, and so I just I pretended to get hit or whatever, and then in uh, in the software I edited it to make it look like I was throwing these. Uh, these snowballs and, and hitting myself. Um, so I don't know, I, I, I was, I kind of liked how that one turned out and, um, yeah, it was just kind of a, a fun, funny video where I got to use some of my, um, video making skills, um, kind of show those off a little bit, I guess. Oh yeah. Nice. Did you actually, were you actually getting hit by the snowballs in, in real life or was that all edited? to make it look like you were getting hit? No, it was, that was edited. So okay. So you threw I, them and then just acted like you got hit. Yeah. So it was, yeah. it was all like one, one video in the first half of the video I threw, I threw actual snowballs um, and they just landed wherever they landed. And then after I'd thrown the four, I walked to a little way, a little ways away from the camera and oh, then just okay. stood there and then like, pretended to get hit in the face and fell over, fall over. So I was really hoping that nobody was like watching me just flopping over <laughs> for no, for no reason in the field. Um, I don't think too many people saw me. Um, okay. But then, so basically I could merge those, those together then. And I just had to animate the, the snowball flying through the air. Wow. And yeah. And was the timing all right that, that it worked out or did you have to like space out the getting hit by it a little bit so it matched up with the throwing of the snowballs? No, I had to adjust things. Um, it, okay. it still looks like it's, it's all one clip, but anytime I fell down, I could just like pause that part of it until, right. Yeah. Until it was ready. So I basically just had to line up the, the throws with the falls and then everything else uh, okay. fell into place so you, after that. So you weren't actually lying mm. with your face in the snow for that long. As long as right. it looked there in the video. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's good to know. So, yeah, that's... Uh, um, now you've been talking a little bit about the videos and some of the different ones that you've done and that kind of thing. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the equipment, the software that you use to, to shoot and uh, produce your videos. So the main um, camera that I use is a... Uh, Canon 70D. It's a DSLR camera that like it, it takes it takes both photos and videos, um, but it's fairly fairly decent quality video. Um, so I've I've had that for a few years, and I, I'd say that's my main piece of equipment. And then I have um, a microphone that I can mount on the top of that um, for a bit better better audio. Okay. Um, but I've also used, I've used a couple different things for, for audio. Um, I've often used my, the microphone on my phone for, for a mic, um, okay. just to save money, I guess. Um, but often if the camera, if the camera is far away for something that I'm recording, I would uh, somehow okay. suspend, suspend my phone um, just above my head, just out of frame, so you so you couldn't see it. But that was that was a way to um, get the microphone close to close to my face, so that the 
sound quality is better. Right. Um, so I've, yeah, I've done a, a couple of things like that. Um, hacks, I guess you, you could call them. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a while back I also bought like a really, a really cheap, um, light set as well. Okay. Like these, these light boxes that are, yeah, the, just, uh, four light bulbs. And then there's like a, a plastic cover to soften the light. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I can, I played around a little bit with getting, uh, some, some nice studio lighting and in shots if it's, especially if it's just me talking. Um, I was going to ask, do you, do you use, do you often set up the lights for the videos that you shoot? Um, where you're just looking at the camera and talking or not for all of those? Um, yeah, I would for most of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does that help the video quality quite a bit to, to have good lighting? Yeah, lighting, lighting I found is, is very, very important. Um, okay. like if you have good lighting, any, any smartphone that you record on will, will look like, will look, the video will look really good on it. Like, especially mm -hmm. these days, like the, the cameras okay. are, are good enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I've, I've heard people say this and I agree with, with it, but, um, audio is also really important when it comes to, to video. Like I've heard people say that they'd mm -hmm. much rather listen to a video where the video quality maybe isn't that good, but the audio is good rather than the other, other way around where the video is okay. really good, but the, but there's bad audio. I see. Um, wow. there's, yeah, I, that's interesting, interesting to think about. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> um, and yeah, then software, I um, mostly use, mostly work in the Adobe suite. So okay. the two main um, programs would be Premiere Pro and After Effects. Um, okay. Premiere Pro would be like, more your typical video editor where you're piecing together clips and building a, a timeline and adding audio and, and stuff like that. And then after effects, um, is where you can do, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff in after effects, but that's where you can start to do like video manipulation, I guess you could call it, um, like make a snowball look like it was a knuckleball and mm. that type of thing. And I use that for, um, um, I guess motion graphics, you'd call it too. So like if, if I want to do, a, um, like maybe it's just moving text or like text counting up from one to 10 really quickly or something like that. Um, I would use after effects for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, a uh, does, does Adobe, wait, the program you use there, does that do a little more than, than iMovie that? that came with my computer that I use when I have to put something together. Yeah, I imagine it would. I've never really used <laughs> iMovie, but okay, I'm quite sure it would. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, so yeah, that's, that was a little bit about, about, um, how you put your videos together and things like that. But before you can put a video together or maybe even shoot it, you have to kind of know what you're doing. So I'm wondering how you, come up with ideas for your videos or where do your ideas come from or how do you decide what videos to use? So what's, what's kind of your decision process when, when uh, deciding to, to come up with a new video? I don't really have a specific, um, way of coming up with ideas. I'd say a lot of them, a lot of the ideas that I have, um, come to me like organically, like, um, I'll mm -hmm. just either randomly think, oh, this, this could like work as an idea for a video, either that or something will happen where I'm like, oh man, we should sort of like recreate this in a video or something like that. Okay. Um, but one thing that I've, that I've tried to, to do is anytime that I think of any idea that could possibly be, um, in a video, I, I write it down. So I have like a, a Google doc where I have. Okay kind of a, um, like a, a list that's always evolving and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then as far as, you know, doing, deciding which to do next, I guess it's basically just whichever, whichever idea I want to do most or 
sometimes it's a, it's a matter of like which i think would be the the easiest or the quickest okay <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's it's interesting because sometimes i'll write an idea down and then i'll forget i wrote it down and and i'll i'll see it again later and then i'll be like well, how like how did i think that would have that would be a good idea for a video <laughs> like i was just looking at the the document a bit um earlier today and one idea i <laughs> i wrote down was i eat a juicy orange and use something to catch all the juice and then it's way more than you'd expect <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm not like, I'm not quite sure what I was envisioning, but when I read that again, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. So. I, I think, I think I can imagine where you came up with that. Like you were, you were one time eating an orange and, and you were just super amazed at orange. how much you lose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe it'd be funny. Like, it? like you you pan down and there's like a, a kid's waiting pool or something just full of orange juice. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. You were going to, you were going <laughs> to really exaggerate it. I thought you yeah. were going to do an, an actual, like, just like a little bit in a glass, but you're like, whoa, if I wouldn't have caught this, I would have missed all of that orange juice. Yeah, yeah I guess that could work too. But how many? Yeah, so many? Uh, I was just going to say that there's, uh, um, yeah, some ideas when, when I first think of them never, never get anywhere. Or a little bit later, I yeah. <laughs> don't, don't think they're that great anymore. Yeah, well, that's that's wise though to write them down because I've I've had brilliant ideas that I remember back to to thinking about them, like remembering that I had a brilliant idea, but I can't remember <laughs> at all what it was anymore. So, so that's wise at least to to write them down. I I'm curious how many are on the list or kind of ballpark since you looked at it at some point today. Uh there was there were maybe about fifteen to twenty ideas on there. Okay, but. Actually, so some of those I had already done, I think, okay. and not not stroked them off, and yeah, or maybe done like versions of them, and they're maybe but, not yeah. all usable, as, right? As you were just right. talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, taking that process a little further, then, so if you come up with an idea or you decide on it, an idea you're going to go with, what are some things that you do in preparation and, and planning then to to actually put the i put the idea into a video so what are some of your steps in in before you actually get to the shooting even are there things that you do to to plan out a video yeah so it definitely de depends on uh what what the video is but for a lot of them i'll there'll be some point where i will be talking like um narrating um some sort of thing Okay. Uh, like even if it, even if it's talking about an event that like recapping an event that happened um, in the past off and like right. to connect one part of the story to another I'll, or whatever. Or sometimes it's almost the whole video is, is me talking and it's kind of built around that. Um, so so for a lot of them, that's how it starts. I, I figure out what what uh, I'm going to say. And so it starts with making an outline and sometimes it's even a word for word script. Okay. Um, I found that writing out a script is actually a big time saver for me. Hmm. If I yeah. like, it, I mean, you spend the time writing it out, but if I try to just talk to the camera, um, I, I mean, I've definitely gotten better at talking to the camera over, over, um, time, but I find that I'll say something and then I'll be like, well, let me try that again and I'll say it again yeah. slightly differently. And I might do that five times for just this one part. And, and so where I lose time then is in the editing process. I have mm -hmm. to go, I have to watch all five of those again and determine which one is going to work the best. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've found that writing out a script, um, I often write it out word for word. And then even just, even just the fact that I wrote it out, it's just so much more, in my head exactly what I want to say that I I don't even really have to memorize it like I can yeah I don't say it exactly like it but it's just it just really helps to to connect the ideas so so that's yeah. a big part writing that line or the script <clears throat> yeah I've definitely found that too in in whether it's giving a talk or I think even 
I've had a few guests on the podcast that have have written out like planned out responses that um, or written out paragraphs of of responses to a question that that I've asked or what they're going to say. But then we're in conversation, so they don't really read it um, because mm-hmm. you don't really do that in a conversation. But I, I have found that that when they do that and come really prepared, it often comes out really clearly or, or co- coherently or it doesn't take them as long to say something as as it does maybe a guest that that had just thought about what they were going to say. So I can right. definitely I definitely know how when you write something down, even if you don't read it, then it still helps <clears throat> to to come come through with clarity and maybe conciseness too in in presenting an idea so i, uh, yeah, I get sure. what you're, where you're coming from there yeah so that's where a lot of a lot of uh, my projects start is mm-hmm. with that script and so then i'll uh, shoot whatever footage i need um, so often it's um, like i said it involves at least some of um, recording myself talking and then yeah it really depends like sometimes it's if it's something i already did i'll have um some footage that's that has already been shot um sometimes it's Mm -hmm. other footage that i'll that i'll need to shoot like for the snowball snowball one i had to go out and shoot that but basically trying to to get all the video footage and then um the next step would be would be like collecting it and organizing it um, that I've also found to be a, a huge time saver is is good file management. OK. Um, and yeah, just having a system for like each project is in a folder and then within that folder, there's there's a, another like a subfolder for um, like the script and and brainstorming anything like that and then there's a subfolder for um project files so like the the actual premiere pro files or after effects um files and there's a separate Mm -hmm. folder for all the footage and then separate for all the audio and just keeping having the same system um so basically you know where where everything's going to be um makes it a lot easier especially if you're doing um doing it over and over again and if you ever need to look back at uh you know find a clip from a certain project mm-hmm. or something that that really helps um so yeah i, th- I think working in, um, as a graphic designer has has definitely helped me with with that like there's a lot of um similar stuff for um like how we organize files at, mm-hmm. at work and stuff that is translated into how i how i manage my video projects okay now. that's interesting um, yeah yeah, so kind of kind of just getting organized, and then um, once once that's organized, I start editing. And again, depending on the project, sometimes I'll um, like I'll edit. Sometimes I'll need to like almost edit part of it before I know what I what I want to say. Um, so it, it okay. it's not always like in, in this exact order, but. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Editing is, is the next step. And then I usually try to try to get a basic, basically like a rough cut of the, the whole video. Um, so I know roughly how long it's going to be. And then if it's too long, I'll start work at working at cutting it down. And then the last step would be to add any, like, um, sometimes I'll, I'll add in like, a another little clip I think is funny or like maybe, a a graphic um yeah just just to try to um add to the video a bit make it okay. a um, more interesting viewing experience um yeah that's about it and then if if it's for youtube after um after i'm finished with the video um a bit of work goes into making the thumbnail as well like for okay. the, the image that uh the people's see on youtube um like the Mm -hmm. yeah thumbnail and yeah i think that's it yeah very good um is it harder or more work to put together um a well done short video like i don't know two to three minutes or uh or a well or to 
to do a longer video, like 10 to 15 minutes, which would you say is, is more difficult to do? I mean, it, it really depends on, on the kind of video. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'd probably say like for my videos, generally speaking, the longer they are, the more work they are. Yeah. Um, so it's just for the more, most part more to put together. Yeah. Yeah. But then, I guess if you're, yeah, there if are you're some... editing throughout, then, then it would be that much more work. Yeah. But then there are some, some longer videos that are, that aren't as much editing work and, um, are easier to make than some shorter ones that have a lot of editing or need to be cut down yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking of there. If you have to like cut it down to, to a certain size, a certain length and, and you really want to do a good job with it, that might take more work. Yeah. How much, how much time do you spend on, on average with, um, getting a video from start to finish? Like how long does it take? I'd say on average, probably like four to five hours. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just a, that's a pretty rough estimate and yeah, it's really going to depend on the type of video too. But when you factor in like the, the planning, like the time that goes into writing a script that can, mm -hmm. that can take a long time and then editing, editing always takes longer than I think it's going to too. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, so that's a, so you're spending like five to 10 hours a week on, at, at your basically two video schedule that you're, that you're doing right now. I guess I should, yeah. I should actually start uh, tracking my time on these and yeah, figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Um, yeah. You've been talking a little bit about, about YouTube. Um, so I'm still thinking about maybe hearing your perspective on, on, <clears throat> on what your goal is with your YouTube channel, things like that, which you have talked about a little bit, but I was also thinking about your observation, your, your use of YouTube and, um, and for watching videos, maybe getting ideas and that kind of thing for, for your own videos. So what are some of the things that you enjoy about YouTube or, or find valuable about it as a, as a platform, as a service? Yeah, I think it's just a really great uh, source of information and learning. Mm -hmm. um, and basically anything, anything that you want to know more about or learn more about, um, to a certain extent, I guess, but basically that can be found on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. For example, just today, um, I wanted to tighten the doorknob on one of our doors cause it was getting mm -hmm. loose. And so I went to take a closer look and there were like, there were no screws or anything. Okay. And I'm like, how am I, how am I even going to do this? But after looking for a little bit on YouTube, I found someone with a doorknob that looked exactly like mine. And he <laughs> said, there's this little button that you have to press to get the knob part off. And then, um, this particular kind of door is, is threaded. So you just have to like un you actually have to screw this, this part and yeah, it all, it all made sense. So it can be really handy for stuff like that. And then, mm -hmm. um, I use it, I use it a lot as a, as a resource for learning new, new skills. Um, whether that's, uh, for making videos or, um, something design related. Um, like they're just a ton of good tutorials mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, and I mean, yeah, there's, there's stuff I use it for like troubleshooting and stuff too. You can, you can usually find someone that has had a similar problem yeah. to you that they can help you fix things. So yeah, I, I think it's just a great source, um, great hub for, for information. Mm. And <clears throat> I also, I also really like the, I think it's the, the main concept behind it and the name like YouTube is. Mm -hmm. Um, like TV for you, or, or basically the idea that anyone who um, has a camera can can just can broadcast their work, and mm -hmm. I think there's something something really cool about about how um, that has has yeah, or just how that has um, become a thing where 
people can share their ideas and and their work um, with others. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I was I've been thinking a little bit about about that recently, and maybe podcasts is a little bit that way too because <clears throat> that's maybe replaced radio in some ways as democratized mm -hmm. radio in that in that anyone really can have a platform now um, and maybe YouTube for for TV in that way. And I was thinking about how much it's changed the world in that there there's just so so much more available to to learn to 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 watch to connect with um so for instance i like if you go back 20 years you wouldn't be able to to watch the thousands of chess matches going on for instance um around the world where now with youtube it's so easy to to tune into different tournaments that are going on and and 20 years ago, if you were a huge chess fan and, and wanted to follow along with some of the top players and, and, uh, and see, watch their games or that kind of thing, um, you wouldn't have been able to do that. Or you're uh, really interested in, in learning about a specific company, um, if you want to know more about them, where a number of years ago, if, if it maybe would have happened that they came up occasionally on like business TV or that kind of thing. But, but now there's... There's people that have dedicated their, their, uh, it's basically their job to make YouTube videos and talk about a, a certain industry or a certain, like there's, there's channels out there that, that only talk about Tesla or, um, only talk about EVs and that kind of thing. Like they, they can get so specific where, and it, it can be anyone like can be someone that has a job in a certain tech or a certain industry or something like that that also makes videos on the side and and shares what they're what they learned mm -hmm. and what they mm -hmm. what they know so yeah it was just it's it's kind of been a recent epiphany for me about how different the world is now um compared to to what it used to be before the time of youtube and th i'm sure there's some negatives and and i find myself wasting time on on youtube too but um, but it also is, is there's a lot of positives with like you talked about the the things that we can learn or or new things to discover with it as well. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna make a judgment on whether it's whether it's better or worse, but it's definitely different. I'll I'll say that much. Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting observation. It would it would be interesting to see like a, a study on that or some of the some of the main ways that. Um, yeah, that YouTube has changed the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I, I don't know how. I mean, it's it's a whole bunch of things too. It's not just YouTube, the internet. Maybe right. it's the internet um, that's really yeah. changed things. But but we think about the news the the last couple of weeks about how how Wall Street's forever changed with the GameStop story and that kind of thing. I don't know mm -hmm. if if people if if people came across that or not. But um, little things like that 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 it seems to seems to have long-reaching effects on on uh, on the world as we know it so be interesting yeah. to see where we are in in 20 years from now um mm -hmm. what uh what are some of your favorite youtubers or um, favorite creators that you've come across on on youtube um yeah that's a good question um probably one of one of the biggest like uh inspirations or in or yeah probably the the one i'd say my favorite youtube favorite youtuber is would be casey neistat mm -hmm. um yeah i'm not sure how familiar you are with with his videos but he's uh um a filmmaker i guess who he basically he changed the game when it came to the vlog okay. and he he did a really famous daily vlog for a really long time, like over a year, I think, where he made a video every single day, and it was it was basically like a a documentary of his day. Only he would find ways to make it just really really engaging, or I found anyway. Um, like he'd he'd do like just really in interesting shots of him. Um, even like even if it was doing something boring like like uh walking his luggage um you know through the lobby of a hotel he might put the camera like underneath the suitcase so it's like you're underneath uh -huh. underneath the suitcase or he'd, he'd do the extra work to get to 
show himself getting on the elevator and then you know he had to go run and grab the camera at some point and like he just put a lot of work into making them like these mini these mini movies and did an excellent job with um with storytelling as well um so i always love watching his videos and i think he was very um or i i i know i i've tried to or at one point i really tried to emulate his style um in okay. some of my videos um a couple others that come to mind are um mark rober and mm. smarter every day um mm. destin sandlin runs that channel so those those guys are both uh like science related i would say um or you can mm -hmm. um, learn a lot from watching them but they they do it in a really entertaining uh, fun way i find mm -hmm. so I, I really enjoy channels like that um and then i watch a lot of um the philip defranco show too it's actually how i watch um some of my news it's basically okay. a, a, <laughs> a news a news show i'm not sure if you're familiar with that just from you talking um, about it a little bit but yeah I've, okay i've not had to watch him yeah um yeah but yes yeah, so that's just that's a, another sorry go ahead well i just i'm just fascinating like how how different <laughs> the the videos that we watch regularly are um <laughs> i mean it's it's not that i'm not interested in them but you just don't have time for near everything so that, yeah that would be interesting but you kind of I'm, I'm like that too where i kind of have a few that that i'll i'll check out their videos occasionally or a few that i'll watch everything they put mm -hmm. out but um but yeah, it's very, can be very different even, even for, uh, for two of us that drew, grew up in the same family. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are, there are a few more I could mention, but, um, as of lately, the, the past couple of years, I've been watching a lot of chess content too, um, okay. both on YouTube, so or some on YouTube and also live streams on Twitch and mm -hmm. my favorite, uh, chess, um, content creator is Eric Rosen. So oh, yeah. I watch watch his content as well. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um that's actually so just uh <clears throat> maybe the beginning of December I got into playing chess a little bit and um you've over the last year or two you've been trying to convince me somewhat to do it, but it was actually watching some on YouTube and um having watching someone that that was streaming and and putting his videos up that and just explaining chess in ways that I had never heard it explained before that got me interested in it for a little bit so um again yeah it's YouTube that was expanding my horizons again I guess mm -hmm. um yeah maybe since you're talking there about but watching chess streaming what uh what's been your experience with either watching streaming or doing a little bit of streaming yourself what um yeah what are your impressions of it um i think it's i think it's a really cool um i don't know if it's a separate media but i th i think it's um yeah the, the concept of it is really cool um i guess speaking first about uh about watching it um like there are um or like you can you can chat with the with whoever's doing the the live stream mm -hmm. and if if uh if there's a lot of people watching there's a good chance that um they won't see your message but right. occasionally they do and so uh, I, there's something kind of cool about them um you know like thanking you for a message or answering a question that you might ask or something in real time like it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a whole other like um, connection I think that you don't necessarily get from just commenting after the fact on a, on a YouTube video. Um, oh yeah. So that there's there's something kind of interesting about that, and I found it for for chess especially that's most of um the the live streaming that I watch is chess. Um, I found it just really really fascinating. Um, watching these like the best chess players in the world um uh i guess 
uh, Hikaru Nakamura is, is one I watch occasionally, one of the best mm -hmm. chess players in the world. Um, watching him, him play and explain his thinking and stuff mm -hmm. um, is, I don't know, it, yeah, there's just something really fascinating about it. Like, I mean, if you, if you imagine, um, let's say Sidney Crosby, like, yeah, like going out on the on the backyard rink, and he'll say, you know, um, like, so when I'm crossing the blue line, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm looking for, like getting his, mm -hmm. um, or if he was mic'd up in a game or something, is maybe even a better description, but. Um, like yeah getting his getting like real-time feedback from someone who's the best at what they do is is really cool i think yeah i've not watched live streaming much at all but the little bit that i've watched chess it works so well for that um like that's what yeah that's what got me into it like it's like whoa <laughs> i've just never heard chess described this way and it uh it made it come alive and <clears throat> seem like a seem like it almost seemed like it was a battle happening on the field um, where uh, like in, in real time, almost like uh, like the pieces were moving, like in responding to each other and, <laughs> and attacking and defending and and uh, things like that. And I'd never thought about chess in that way before. So uh -huh. it, uh, it almost came alive um, um, for me when I immediately started playing and, and really enjoying it. So. Um, so yeah, I just I I agree that that streaming and chess go hand in hand. So you've been trying to do it, or you've been doing it yourself a little bit here since the the new year with your Saturday morning um, chess streams. Um, so yeah, what's been your experience like with that, or um, um, how have you been finding that? Yeah, so actually, kind of the reason I did that was I got to the end of the first week of this year and I'd been making a video every day and I was starting to get pretty exhausted from this and I was like hey I could just do a live stream for my Saturday video and that would be so much easier because it wouldn't take all the the prep and the editing work and stuff mm -hmm. and I had done a live stream for my birthday party like back um, in April of, of last year, right? Um, where I just posted a thing on Facebook and said anybody who wants to stop by and say hi can. And I did, made a little Kahoot quiz that ended up not working. Um, <laughs> but a few people stopped by. Like I think it got up to to forty viewers at one point, and people were wishing me happy birthday. And I I don't know. I, I really I really enjoyed that. Um, so. Yeah, and I enjoy the game of chess too. I'm not an expert by any means, but um, yeah, that's kind of why I decided to to give that a try. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed for the <laughs> for the most part. Not very many people have been watching the the chess streams um, live anyway, so I haven't really gotten um, too much of the like the live feedback experience. Um, but I don't know. I, I I just enjoy playing chess. So if uh, even if nobody watches, I I probably will still have fun. Nice. Are you gonna yeah. keep doing it? Um. Yeah. I th I think for for a little bit, do a couple more at least. Yeah. Um. Just a little more on chess. What What do you enjoy about chess, or why do you find it to be a appealing and engaging game? Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting that you mentioned that um, watching live streams of it or videos about it got you into it again. Cause I think that's kind of what happened for me as well. Okay. And like, yeah, so I'd, I'd learned how to play as a kid and definitely enjoyed it, but it, it always felt like it wasn't something that I, that I really wanted to play. Um, like it kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, it felt like a huge time commitment and it was, I just felt like, you know, so much work and you just, you can make one mistake and the whole game's gone, yeah. <laughs> and, um, which is definitely how it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I guess learning some, learning from some experts, just some basic um, strategies and, and ideas and things to remember and, and tactics um, just kind of opened up a whole, whole new world of 
possibilities in the game for me and um i started just like really enjoying it again and and playing okay. a lot uh online and doing a bit of studying here and there trying to trying to improve and get better and i think it's just it's an incredible game like it's been around for for so long like mm -hmm. 1500 years or something like that a long time and, or a version of it anyway yeah and it's it's so simple like it's just 64 squares and a few pieces but mm -hmm. every it's still so complex that uh like um even the best computers haven't like solved the game like you yeah you can't uh guarantee that if you play the right moves you're you're gonna win or there's no there's no forced win at this stage anyway yet and yeah it's just, it's fascinating that it's that it's basically a sport like you can have um professional chess players who who play in these elite tournaments with cash prizes and stuff like it's yeah it's that uh that intense of a game it's pretty cool mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah it is all right well in our uh before we uh, wrap it up here i always like to to hear what advice you have to share so thinking back to uh, making videos do you have any advice to someone that's interested in in uh, starting a youtube channel or making videos to to share with others any advice for how to get started or, or how to improve uh, yeah, I have a few things down here. Um, this this one is said a lot, but it's true, and that's don't worry about um, having the best gear. These days, mo mm -hmm. most people um, already have enough um, enough of like they have a smartphone with a camera on it or, and enough gear to at least get started. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just focus on the ideas behind the videos and um, yeah, if you're really getting started, get some experience using um, what you have and uh, yeah, see, see how you like it and how it works out for you. Mm -hmm. um, another one would be put in the effort in planning in the planning stage. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of talked about that with writing scripts, but just in general, um, I find that the end product is is a lot better when um, the the effort is put forth in the beginning and in, in planning. Yeah. And and uh, one other thing I wrote down is um, a quote. I'm pretty sure it was in a, in a behind the scenes um, of of uh, some DVD, like some director or something said it. Um, okay. but that is pain is temporary film lasts forever. And, <laughs> um, so the, what I mean by that is, um, that, or like, it's, it's really cool to be able to, to go back and see a project that you worked really hard for. So, and, and, and yeah, it's sometimes really rewarding to go back and watch that again. So it, in the moment it can seem like you don't want to put forth the effort or you're you're too scared to like go film something where somebody else might see you or something and yep. so you just, just remember that like think about the end product like nobody nobody cares if they if they, they see you with your camera um yeah don't do anything stupid like we're gonna hurt yourself but that's not <laughs> yeah. what i mean by by this but um, or get arrested or anything right right definitely <laughs> Yeah, people definitely take that that too far. Yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe we'll just scratch that. Just forget that last piece of advice. <laughs> no, you you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, very good. Um, th from your from your experience with YouTube, and I know that uh, you're not saying you have a a big presence or anything here, but do you have any thoughts on on uh, creating a YouTube presence? Or are there tips that you have for? for building an audience on YouTube, if that's something you want to want to try to make a go of. Yeah, don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and only have 500 subscribers 12 years later. <laughs> no, like, like I said, I, um, I've never like tried super hard to, to grow, um, my channel, but I think, 
I think um, one thing I would say is is realize at the beginning that it's a lot of work, like taking videos mm -hmm. is a lot of work. And it's very likely there are some exceptions, but it's very likely that if your goal is to grow, that it's going to take a long time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of cool to see some of these some of these channels that uh, um, like one that comes to mind is is Marquez Brownlee, um, mm -hmm. MKBHD does tech videos and he's been doing them for a long time and like he made a ton of videos um i think he started when he was like 14 or something um mm -hmm. and he just worked worked really hard and kept improving kept getting better and yeah he's grown his his channel into something something incredible so um yeah so just just realize that it's it's going to take a lot of um, a lot of work and potentially a long time um, mm -hmm. if the end goal is to to grow your channel into something big. Mm -hmm. um, and then one that I've not followed, but I've heard a lot a lot of people say is to um, two things to find a niche um, mm -hmm. and to be consistent. So um, whether it's, you know, uploading a video once a week or once a month or more often than that, just to, to try to be as consistent as you can is generally a good idea. And then, um, finding a niche. So like being known for something, um, you know, um, yeah, like have, have some sort of, um, unique selling point, I guess you could say like where mm -hmm. people who, who happen to find your channel or know your channel, like, know more or less what you're about, what, what they're going to get by, by spending time watching your videos. Yeah. You had a, I think you said something about that recently in a video that you did. And I kind of chuckled when you, when you said that you haven't followed um, that advice to, <laughs> to have a specific um, niche or, uh, or topics that you talked about or something like that i kind of kind of chuckled too because you kind of do a wide variety of things and with my podcast i've been having on a wide variety of guests like basically anyone in their uh and and their expertise instead of like on a specific topic or people within a specific field or something like that so i thought maybe we're uh we have we're from the the same cloth of having too many interests and just <laughs> just enjoying hearing yeah. you talking about a number of different things yeah, that's part of the problem for me. I'm not willing to like, to like, only focus on one thing. Like I, I like to try so many different things, um, mm -hmm. and different topics and stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, for that advice that that you thought through there. Just before we do sign off, do you have uh, anything else that you wanted to talk about that you didn't get a chance to, or anything you want to promote yet before we wrap it up? Um. No, not other than um, uh, my YouTube channel. If uh, if um, you're listening to this and you're interested, you can check that out. Um, we'll we'll put a link um, in the in the website, and yeah, um, I I try to make videos that you'll that you'll enjoy watching. So, and if you do watch them and enjoy them, um, hit that like button. <laughs> Yes, and don't forget to comment and subscribe. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks again, Ricky, for for coming on the podcast again and uh, sharing on another of your your many interests and and that you have. So. Thank yeah. Thank you. you. I really enjoyed this again. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and thank you, Ricky, for sharing your knowledge with us. It was interesting to hear the stories from how he got started on his video making hobby and wasn't something that I was I really ever got into or joined him in but I was often along for the trips that he would go on and document or would be observing his his different ideas and him carrying carrying them out and it was always interesting and fun to to see him develop his hobby I also liked what he had to share about not being afraid to to step out and try something new or different and not worrying about maybe how it's going to look or or 
what others are going to think about a, a certain project or, or an attempt to do something creative and interesting. So thank you, Ricky, for sharing those things with us. If you want to check out Ricky's YouTube channel, there's a link provided on the website, everydayexpertise.ca, that goes along with this, with this episode. Or you can uh, look him up on YouTube and, and see if you can find um, Ricky Martin. might not work to just type in Ricky Martin. There might be some other things that, that come up, but there are ways that you can find his, his videos. And uh, if you want to learn more about the podcast, you can, of course, go to the website. If you want to connect with me for any reason to tell me what you think of the show, or you would like to be a guest or suggest a guest that I should have on, please email me at contact at everydayexpertise.ca. That's all for now. Join me again next week to learn from the expertise of everyday people.